What's going on? This is Andre from AndreLvon.com. And in this video, we're going to discuss how to use LinkedIn Pulse to distribute your content. LinkedIn Pulse is LinkedIn's version of the publishing platform. Um, they encourage you to put content on their publishing platform. So actually a lot of different social media companies are doing this right now are in the process of doing it as well. And we're going to go through a, a few, I'm going to actually go through mine and a few, few other uh, content creators and give you some resources throughout this video as we go that you could check out as well. Okay. Make sure you have a LinkedIn account. LinkedIn of course is a professional social media network so this is a place where a lot of employers come to hire or come to look at different prospects to hire so and it functions as a social media site as well so there's different rules on LinkedIn I would say as opposed to a place like Facebook or Twitter LinkedIn has um, I would say you know it's professional so it being professional you want to make sure you do some different things on LinkedIn like like not post things such as what are you eating for dinner and stuff like that because I tell you on LinkedIn they don't care <laughs> they don't they can care less what you what you had for dinner last night or you know um, where are your vacation and that and all of that good stuff that that's for websites like Twitter Instagram Facebook things of that nature I would say Facebook and and Instagram not not more people do that on Twitter but more so on Facebook because Facebook is more you're more in tune with your friends so that's who follow you but professional network you have people that follow you that don't know you that I don't know may either offer you a job or may offer you some type of uh, some type of work but it functions as like I said as a social media platform but LinkedIn Pulse you can go to linkedin.com slash pulse p u l s e and here right here you have the linkedin pulse this is linkedin pulse page uh see that guy right there that's me and you can scroll down and you can see who publishes to linkedin actually here's a post right here from bill gates so there's a lot of different big time LinkedIn influencers that post on here. There's uh, I'm gonna go through it as well. You have other other websites that post their content. VentureBeat. Uh, you see some down here from CNBC, Mashable. Um, there's a there's a lot of different a lot of different content creators. A lot of outside websites that publish their posts on their websites first. And then they'll post them on LinkedIn. So in LinkedIn, they, they encourage that as well. The thing about it, though, when you when you post from, I guess, your website and then post it on LinkedIn, you have to make sure that you put a link on there and let everybody know, hey, this was published first on you know my website or at this particular website if you're sharing something outside your website on LinkedIn post so let me scroll down here you can see business insider right here and so forth but if you want to post content of your own see this publish a post feature right here have something to say click on it if you're publishing a new post actually within the last I will say within the last probably within the last week or two they changed this entire platform so you can add images or a video for visual impact write your headline right here see this more button here 
you press that start a new post I guess it's just, yeah, it's the same screen so I guess right here is where you would add your image and if it's the same image size from previous it's usually a 700 by 400 pixel image that is needed here and you could actually if you don't have an image you can go to a website like canva.com and make an image for here you press this normal button this is where you want your H your H1 heading or your H2 headings so whenever you're typing a heading even through the, throughout the body of the content if you want to make a headline and it'll it'll stand out bold italic underline and that's your numbered list so it, it's fairly easy this is a bullet it's fairly it's fairly easy they make it easy to publish on the platform if you want to add a link that's how you do it so it's a easy easy very easy to publish on let me go through this you can actually go to your old posts and these are three posts that I've published on here I'm gonna go through I'm gonna go through mine real quick this one the social media marketing strategies 10 reasons so as you can see remember like I said before they actually recently changed all of this stuff but actually they actually made it easier so see what see I actually published this this was when I had my book when I had when my book first came out social media simple marketing this is a blog post that I wrote 10 reasons why I wrote a book to help local small businesses and I published this on my blog first and after I published it on my blog I published it here and if you actually want to check this out on my blog you can click here but as you can see it's pretty pretty easy this is a long post this was about uh the actual blog post on my website it was actually like over 4000 words so some in the neighborhood of 4200 4300 word post so it's pretty long post but I'm gonna show you something that I did as we go through here I wanna scroll down here I'm gonna make a few points also this is the end of the post I'm gonna come back here but the end of the post where I put for the conclusion of this article please visit my website and also if you enjoy this all that good stuff so put a link at the end of the page also so I'm gonna go to a couple of other well one in particular bear with me just a second to me this is the best blog post that I found about LinkedIn publishing it's a website called OK Dork by a guy named Noah Kagan I believe Noah was actually the 30th employee at Facebook before he was fired so he tells this story you can check him out at okdork.com and this blog post we they analyze 3,000 most successful LinkedIn publishing posts this is the best blog post with the most information about publishing on LinkedIn and I'm gonna go through a few things and I tried to follow this follow this thing the best I could they want you to make your titles between 40 and 49 characters long 
and they say it receives the greatest amount the greatest number of post views overall and you can see the numbers right here from the research that they did actually there's a guy I'm sorry this guy name is Paul Shapiro so you can check out his blog search wilderness and follow him on Twitter as they say right there so he actually guest posts for OK Dope OK Dork I'm sorry and from the research it says 40 to 49 character link titles received the greatest number of post views so and it shows right here 40 to 49 so in between there so they actually should have said between 30 and 50 but they did the research so I'm gonna trust what they say it also says make your post on LinkedIn visual add eight images so when you add eight images in your LinkedIn post those are the, the average views that they get now that didn't work for me so I'm gonna be honest with you but I, I kinda kinda believe I know why mine didn't perform as well so I'll go back to mine so in, in actually what they were saying including this one this image up here also so I'm gonna count mine I got one two three four five six seven eight eight images is what I have in mind let's go back okay scroll down another thing I noticed in this blog post they said don't add videos or other multimedia assets to your posts so they don't like when you add like YouTube videos and stuff like that average LinkedIn views so it's saying when you have zero videos or other multimedia pieces of content this is the average LinkedIn views if you have one two three four and so forth so I didn't have any in mind it says unfortunately the date indicates that the inclusion of multimedia assets are associated with fewer post views so like I said earlier they did the research so I, I won't question the research I kinda have my own spin to all of this but we'll get into that later all right use the how-to and list style headlines alrighty all right I used uh, sort of a list style you know I actually got this word in front of it and ten reasons so ten reasons why I wrote a book so so I kind of didn't did but didn't do exactly what they called for and I'll scroll down to the next one actually it says don't write question posts so doesn't like for you to write question posts and looks like sort of that's what I did a little bit if you see this part so if you see why you're thinking it's a question but in actuality this is really not a question not a question post so we'll go back do write how to post these perform best and I I would say most content perform best with how or how to post and you can see LinkedIn videos and almost anything with how to post perform well and the reason for that is because especially if somebody's searching for something either on either of those two big search engines Google or YouTube because people are always searching for 
answers for something. So, and even even myself, when you know when something breaks down around the around the house, you know, YouTube is usually the first place I go, and I'll plug in how to do whatever it is that broke around here, <laughs> and that's usually how I find everything. And those videos usually perform well. So I can understand the performance of how and how to post. So that's a valid post, a valid point. Do write list posts. And that's kind of what I did in mind with the 10 reasons why and kind of added the 10 reasons right there in the actual title there. But where I screwed up at. It says, don't write headlines like this. Do business schools breed arrogance. Write them like this. Business schools breed arrogance. Or 12 reasons business schools breed arrogance. I should have kind of came with the 10 reasons. And I can always change this. So I may change this to see how it performs. It may not do anything. But I could have put 10 reasons why I wrote a book to help local small businesses as the title right here. Why I didn't do that? Because it was kind of writing this first one as a test to test out the LinkedIn publishing platform and see how this first post would perform all right this says divide your post into five headings in order to attract the greatest number of post views and when you use headings h1 and h2 H3, etc., headings to break your post into easily digestible and skimmable sections will help your post perform. So make sure you use those H1, H2 tags. And it's saying the number of headings, if you have five of them, I kind of went overboard. I believe that's, a, that's one there. It's a H1. This is a So H1, I don't know what the heck I did right here. Yeah, that's H1. I made this H2. So let's just count them. We'll say one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm clicking them because I want to make sure that that comes up. Seven. Eight. So if you go right here, and that'll change. So that's eight, nine. Yeah, I went ten. Yeah, I went off the deep end a little bit. But that's okay. <laughs> Eleven, twelve, thirteen. It's 13. I'm actually clicking right here, like I said previously, because I want to make sure that I actually did this right. Because I know when I first wrote this, I made some of these bold instead of H1 tag. So that one is 13, 14. What the heck was I thinking? So actually 14, 15. 15 H2 tag. So that was a no no. So you see the low view count. That was horrific. Okay. And I'm just showing an image of one of a post that was published. All right. People like to read long form content on LinkedIn, so I'll go to a, let me show you something here. I go to a website called wordcounter.net. Wordcounter.net is a really cool, really cool website where you can actually count words from a blog post. I do it a lot of times if I'm comparing a, a blog post that I'm writing 
if I'm seeing how a particular blog post, if I want to know how it's going to rank, I'll compare it up to, I guess, the top three for my particular keyword in Google. And I'll go to those three, the top three posts, and I'll take the, I'll do exactly what I'm about to show you here. I'll take Well, we'll go right there. Uh, how about this? I'll go all the way down. I'll take all of that. Left click and drag it on up. And it did nothing. Hold on. We'll do it again. We're only recording, right? Okay. So I'll take it. Scroll. I want to go past the title like I did. So, okay, we'll just take that and we'll copy that and we'll come to word counter and paste it. So we'll copy and paste. And that's what I, that's what I do when, like I said, if I'm writing a, a blog post and I want to see where a certain keyword rank, I'll look up the keyword in Google and the first three spots, I'll take those blog post and I'll copy and paste the content come to word counter and it'll give me the word count so it says 1900 to 2000 words and my post is 2229 words so I'm not sure if the extra 229 words actually hurts me or not. So, because they only, people like to read long form content on LinkedIn, 1900 to 2000 words long. And you see the view count right there. All right, we'll go on to the next one. It says, don't get your audience all fired up. And I would imagine this has something to do with the, titles post written in language reflecting the positive sentiment tend to get the most linkedin shares and likes however neutral language posts tend to see more comments and post views than both positive and negative sentiments and it says for example the following text is from a post written in a neutral tone aside from the military blah 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 and it says about the topics of drones it is neither positive or negative and it talks about drones it is neutral and all about stating the facts. So it's saying if the sentiments of your post is not inherently clear to you, there are a number of free sentiment analysis tools you can use to assess your writing, such as Alchemy API. So kind of have to watch your tone with the LinkedIn. Remember, it's a professional website and you really don't want to make your post on LinkedIn. I guess too controversial is what it's pretty much saying. And mine was really about social media marketing strategy and pretty much given the reasons why I wrote a book and why it would be helpful for local small businesses. All right. Number eight, make your content readable for 11 year old. The only thing that I don't see, well, I was going to say what I don't see in LinkedIn that I do see in like my web WordPress dashboard is I can actually if you're using if you're using if you have a WordPress website and you're using a plugin called Yoast SEO Yoast SEO it has a readability a readability thing in there I'm writing it down right now Yoast so I'll make sure that I 
I want to make sure that I leave that for you in the description. When you're using Yoast, it tells you, I believe it's Yoast. I hope I'm saying it right because I actually use something different. I don't use Yoast anymore, but I believe Yoast had a readability deal within the plug-in, if I'm not mistaken. And it would tell you, it would give you the readability, and it'll tell you from 0 to 20, from 20 to 40. It'll, it'll tell you you have to be in a certain range for a particular audience. And this says make your content readable for 11-year-old. Um, and that's what it was, this Flesh Kincaid reading deal. And you, here it is right here. And it'll tell you that if you have a WordPress site. So before you publish it, publish it on LinkedIn, and if you have that Yoast plugin or one of the other plugins, I believe it's the Yoast plugin, it will have the Flash Reading E score in there for you. So you want to be writing here, 80 to 89. You want to make your content easy for 11 year old. So saying despite what conventional wisdom might say about the LinkedIn audience being more educated and easy readability level attracts more post views now like I said this is the research that that this guy done and I would imagine they put in a lot of time with this as well alright we'll go to the next one promote your LinkedIn publish a post on your other social media sites and that's really about just sharing it to Twitter and sharing it to I guess as many social media networks that you're on so and it has a it's telling you if you're planning to use social media networks to promote your LinkedIn post which should tweets have the highest correlation to LinkedIn success metrics now I always tweet my LinkedIn when I publish a post I always tweet it out and it's really not about the I don't know if it's really about the response that you're going to get on Twitter more so than that they're speaking of here about the correlation of LinkedIn with Twitter so I would definitely do it any content that you put on on LinkedIn I, I would share it out on Twitter because that's that's exactly what I do even when I share it to any of the LinkedIn groups that I'm in I make sure that I share it on Twitter as well and you'll kind of see that in LinkedIn if you're sharing something it will show you you'll see a button if you have your Twitter connected to your LinkedIn I highly recommend that alright alright this one should be LinkedIn likes get you views shares and comments LinkedIn post likes are the common denominator between the other LinkedIn metrics more post likes will also get you LinkedIn shares post views comments according to correlation data now this was my first post so I didn't have a whole lot of engagement and that's not to say that this this doesn't work so I kinda believe it worked but the thing that you here's the thing that I was kinda alluding to early on the thing that you must understand about social media networks is they are all, I don't care which social media network it is it could be Facebook Twitter Instagram Pinterest any of them the one thing that they're gonna always do whether you know or notice about it they are always going to change their algorithms they're always going to change their algorithm because they don't want anyone to game their algorithm and I'm not saying these guys here by doing this great research was trying to game their algorithm but that's kind of how it's kind of how they think in online world so they update these algorithm changes all the time by me producing, well, I might like, I think I produced like three of them so far on, on LinkedIn. And I haven't had 
anywhere near this engagement that I'm showing you guys like this here. And that's not to say that's not going to happen down the line, but currently it's not, it's not happening like that, but that doesn't mean it, it won't happen like that for you. As you see me going through this, I've made a lot of mistakes. Well, according to this going, you know, if you want to compare it to, to this, I've made some mistakes as well. So I just have to kind of find where kind of find my, my niche niche, so to speak in using LinkedIn publishing platform. Do I believe in LinkedIn publishing platform? Absolutely. Because I've seen so many content creators use it and be successful with it. Let me go to this next point here. Bonus tips. It says, make sure you publish your LinkedIn post on a Thursday. And this is some good information right here. It gives once again, the average LinkedIn views. The best day to post it, according to this, is on a Thursday. Average of 19,164 views. And I'm sure this occurs for a reason, this one, and especially Sunday as well. So I'm not sure exactly what the reason is in terms of why it happens that way, but they, they did, the, did the research, and this is the data that you have from it. All right, and these are the, the summary right here. In order to get the maximum number of post views, your title should be 40 to 49 characters long. Include eight images in your post. Don't embed multimedia such as YouTube videos in your blog posts. Write how to post. They perform the best. Divide your posts into five sections. Right between 1,900 and 2,000 words, your writing should have a neutral tone. Write your post so it can easily be understood by the masses for an 11-year-old. Publish your posts on Thursday. Cross-promote LinkedIn posts on Twitter. Twitter post likes the most common denominator between the other LinkedIn metrics. So this is this is a pretty good this is a pretty good post. It's really like I said, this is the this is the best post that I found when I was looking to publish content on LinkedIn and I'm going to have a link of this post in the description as well. Hey, the one point that I want to make also, you can always go back and and change anything. So, and I I may actually go in and update this just to see what it does and I may even make a part 2 of this video and go through the updates to see if anything has, has changed and when you update something just make sure you say I'm adding there and you you know you press publish right there to update it fairly easy to do or you can go you know, you'll see this is the original one. So you'll see here and I'll go to the stats right here. You you won't see anywhere. See 14 people, one thumbs up, one person shared. And like I said, that could have been an algorithm change or it just could have been, hey, this is the first one that I published. So, of course, they're not going to give me a whole lot of a whole lot of love. I'm just a little small social media strategist from St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> and you know, LinkedIn's not going to give you the give you love obviously like Bill Gates who has a following. So I really don't have that big of a following basically in order to garner a whole bunch of page views. So I'm not mad about that or anything. I'm just kind of showing you. But do do I believe in LinkedIn publishing platform? I really do. I believe it's a great place to add your content and to get more people if you want more people to your website or whatever your goals may be i i believe linkedin publishing is the way to go all right this is a guy right here lewis howes he's here with the great tony robbins and this is a this is one that he published as well and you see he didn't get a well he got 19 likes five comments 
So he got a little love, but he does. The thing that I notice in here, he has one image. He has a YouTube video. He also has a big following, by the way, as well. And he also created 90, a total of 97 posts on this publishing platform. So and we'll go to, I'm going to go to his LinkedIn real quick, just to show you something here. Well, the, here are the 97 posts is what I really wanted to show you. And you can kind of see the numbers of his posts is what I, what I wanted to show you. Well, we'll go all the way down to the beginning to when he wrote his first post. And no, I'm not comparing either myself or my post to Lewis Howes because like I said, he has a following. So his, his is going to be a lot different far different than than mine's obviously his posts Let me move that over a little bit there all right okay this is his first post and see how many eyes he had and see he gets engagement if you can look at all his engagements he started his first post September 22nd 2014 and you can see the engagement some more some less now I've actually seen I've actually seen people that produce content here on LinkedIn with far better numbers than than what he has here I mean far better numbers so like I said there they're always going to change their algorithms and people are going to post differently. Like even when I just showed you in, in Lewis's post with Tony Robbins, you know, he only had one image. He only, you know, he used the video. So according to the article on OK Dork, though there is, there's a lot of rules that he didn't abide by. And I don't know, maybe he didn't know that or, you know, his, him and his staff or, you know, they just do things the way they want to do. Maybe it's enough engagement for him or whatnot. I'm sure he's probably never officially tested all this. You just look at the engagement. This one here, he's got a pretty cool number on it right there. So I guess to each his own. See, he's with this guy right here, Casey Neostat. And you see it. So, and looks like he stopped producing content here on LinkedIn. I know he had a awesome book out as well. So maybe he, maybe, and you know, he, this guy's always busy. So he's always doing other things and with webinars and things of that nature. But, Link the LinkedIn publishing platform. Everyone uses it a little different, and you know, I guess it worked for him the way he wanted it to. All right, I'm going to my LinkedIn page, and what I do like about the LinkedIn platform publishing platform is whenever you post content it comes to your profile page all three of them all three that I've actually done and you can view stats like I said I don't have a lot at all so I don't have a big following and so a few others that I post I'll go to this one Ten easy ways to create Facebook ads. All right. Ten easy ways to create Facebook ads. Manager for your business. Okay. I'm going to see how many images I have here. One. See if I did anything different. Two. Three. 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that's nine, ten, eleven, twelve, Thirteen. Let me make sure I didn't miss any. No, I didn't. So actually, thirteen right there. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen images. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. So, 19, nineteen images that I use, and all right. Actually, I'm gonna go to a different screen. All right, I have to click the Edit Post button, and. I'm going to count the headlines. We have one, two, three, what was that one there? Four, all right, this is just a bold one. So still at four, five, five, H1, H2, Plus four, that's another bold one. Six, seven, should be another bold one, okay. Eight, another bold, another bold. Another bold, see the bold lights up. Another bold, I don't even need to click. I'll click it just, just in case here. All right, that's nine. Oops, that should be a bold. Just double checking those. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. So in this one, I have fourteen H one H two headings. So I'm a I'm a little off according to this thing. I'm way off. But hey, at least you have to try it. You have to try it and play around with these things to see what works for you. Yeah, it says uh, divide your post into five headings. So, should have used five H1, H2 tags. I say H1, H2 because that's all LinkedIn shows. In your blog, if you have a WordPress blog, it'll show H3 and so on. So, it'll go all the way down H4 and so forth. Okay. Let's see. See how long is this thing? We'll go back to wordcounter.net. Clear that out. There 
Actually, that's the wrong one. All right, this is the right one. All right, let's let's check out the word count on this post here. Still going, still going, still going. All right, almost done. All right. Copy. Close that. See where I'm at. 2,847 words. That might be a little too long, even for LinkedIn. All right. We'll go back to word counter and clear that off. So that's a lot of words. That's a long blog post if it's on your blog. So 2,800 plus words, as you can see here, wow. So I wonder if I would have stayed, if I cut that down to that number, would it change? So I might even play around with, with the two posts, like I said earlier, and do some edits. Just see what it does. And you can see go right back here. It's uh another list title, ten ways to create Facebook ads, so forth. And I'm not exactly sure what the readability is on it. I know I did publish it to LinkedIn. Hey, one thing that I wanted to say was this is somewhere I read. I don't I don't see it in this post. Well, this post it, it kind of spoke a little bit about it. it. Talks about the correlation with with Twitter and LinkedIn. I've read somewhere that if you send your the, well, the ultimate goal of the LinkedIn publishing platform for any content creator is to get featured by LinkedIn and you see see where it says editor picks so obviously Bill Gates is always going to be featured by LinkedIn I don't care what he's writing about but I'm gonna scroll down and see if we see any other yeah this is somebody that publishes on LinkedIn so you want to be this guy right here Vic Vikram want to be him and you want to be featured on LinkedIn my point was I've read a few places where in order to get their attention LinkedIn pulse you have to go to their Twitter follow their Twitter account when you send out when you press publish I've heard you might want to send them a tweet with your article in your tweet LinkedIn pulse not Link, not LinkedIn, but LinkedIn, LinkedIn Pulse Twitter account. So you want to bring some attention to it in order to get to the editor's pick. I'm not sure how this guy did it. Or I, I know darn well Bill, Bill Gates didn't send him a tweet and say, hey, guys, I'm over here. Anything Bill Gates put, puts out is going to be editor picks. I would imagine. Let's see this right here. This is the leadership lessons from Scott. This is the movie Sully. This guy looks looks just like um, I guess the character that Tom Hanks played leadership lessons from Sully see how well this did but I'm sure this guy has a has a pretty good platform but this did very well well it did well I would imagine too because as of the recording of this 
the new movie that's portraying this guy, Tom Hanks, titled Sully, is out. So I'm sure when people saw Sully, I'm sure they've seen all the advertising about the movie. And as soon as they seen Sully, boom. Obviously, you know, people want, you know, they want to read the article and see what it's about. So this guy here, let's go to his profile. So he has 11,000 followers, so he has a pretty good following. Also, he's not to say he's not a darn good writer. He's a lecturer at Yale University, so that explains it all, too. So, <laughs> so that, it definitely couldn't hurt. So I'm going to go to the post. See, he posts 90 different posts on LinkedIn, and I want to go all the way down to his first one. First of all, the first thing I'm going to do is follow this guy. So anytime he publishes something, I'll see it in my news feed. So we'll go all the way down to his first post. So I'm sure he had a following from the beginning. So Yale professor. So you see the engagement. And look at the look at the title. So this guy, this is really not how to. Doesn't necessarily have to be how to, even though that research says so. So question, another question one, and you see the the engagement. So that. That publishing success article from OK Dork, the, the research they did, mm, you know, I'm sure it works. Like I said, I'm not I'm not doubting it at all. But like I said, to each his own on producing content on LinkedIn, you have to find what works for you. And if you're starting off and don't have a and don't have a following, chances are it could be a little. You know, it's not to say you want to quit. You never want to quit. You want to keep going. You want to keep going until you find out not only how it works or how you can make it work for you. Because you can make it work for you. There's an audience on LinkedIn. There's an audience on every social media site. Here's another one here with a question. And look at the engagement. 32,000. So, this guy's doing pretty good. So as I'm scrolling, I'm kind of looking at that and I'm looking at the titles. You know, he has a how-to one right there. This one here. So this guy's good, whoever he is. 190,000. Naked unicorns in subprime valley. So this guy knows what he's doing. Let's, I'm sorry, I had to click it just to see what this was about here. The signs of a tech bubble are plain to see, but Silicon Valley doesn't want to admit it, and average investors are at risk. So I knew it had something to do with Silicon Valley, and you can kind of tell the guy he's a money and finance guy. But let's see. He has image here. And image here. So... Here's what I have to say about about this article right here. It everything is not going to work. All the research is not going to. It, it those rules don't apply to everyone. If you got a huge following like this guy, and you know Lewis Howe has a huge following, I I don't think so much on. I think he has a pretty good following on LinkedIn, but he doesn't use the publishing platform like he used to. I believe if he still if he still would have been producing content and change up, change up some things here and there, he would have had some. He would have more engagement. This guy right here has a following. He knows what he's doing. It's pretty damn good. Looks like he's a pretty damn good writer. But those rules don't apply to everyone. 
So he has a couple of images and he and he writes well. You know, he writes engaging content. And um and like I said, he gets he gets pretty good he gets pretty good engagement, so hats off to this guy. Okay, I'm going to blaze through this last one. This is my third one, the last one that I published on LinkedIn to date. How to use hashtags, the do's and don'ts of Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And I use a, a infographic on here as well. So, you see, with this one I have more... I have more links. In it, um, let me count my images. I have one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I actually had seven. seven images the headers let me go into the edit post so I can actually count the so I can get an accurate count of the headers one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 so I had actually 12 actually had 12 h1 h2 on here this is a little different one where I'm really encouraging I was really encouraging people to go to the website so they can see the infographic but the one thing I did notice over time and I would imagine it gets better once you publish content on LinkedIn on a consistent basis is that I noticed with each one I got more eyes on it and more you know a little more engagement on it so it's not a real big thing I only have almost 1200 followers on LinkedIn so I don't expect like too much I don't expect too much engagement but using this platform I really recommend it. I really do. I really recommend it. And I'm going to, as I post more content, especially blog posts in particular, I don't think I would ever write a blog on my, write a blog post on my blog and not put it on LinkedIn. Well, since obviously I'm a, you know, a, a business to business guy as well. So I don't think I would ever post on my blog and not post it on LinkedIn because I believe you're missing out on a huge opportunity if you're just posting to your blog if you if you blog about business in any way shape or form I highly recommend you to after you post it on your blog come to LinkedIn and use the same content on your blog just make sure that you have this here Put that link there and let everybody know that hey this article first appeared right here on you know on your website and I notice let me see at the bottom if I put another one yeah I put one at the top and put one at the bottom as well so you wanna you always want to let your readers know where the content came from you want to make sure you do that um I'm really not gonna go through um, 
this one in detail. I, I think you guys get get the picture about the LinkedIn publishing platform and all the things that it can do for you. Okay, I'll stop zinging this up and down. And there you have it. Hey, make sure you subscribe to my channel right now. Don't wait. Press the subscribe button so you can see, so you can get notified about any of my future videos. Subscribe. Hey, I hope I provided as much value as possible about the LinkedIn publishing platform. It's not a real big scary place. It's actually easy. They make it easy and they've recently made it even more easy to publish content on their platform. Hey, thanks for watching. Hey, like, share comment all that good stuff if you got any questions leave them in the comments thank you very much for hanging in there with me for this long video thank you